It's finally raining. The kids Mommy. want to put on rain gear. Let me go outside. We need something rainy. Yep. When you go outside, you need something rainy. <laughs> the thunderstorms were supposed to end yesterday. Weather reports are garbage. <laughs> Sunday. It's August 1st, 2021, and I'm gonna do a garden tour, which I forgot to do last week because it was too busy. We're on vacation. We went for a hike instead. It was very worth it. Some garden harvest. Pumpkins! July start. August starts and also water comes. This nonsense is just nonsense, but exciting. A uh, second round of summer squash pumpkin y. It's a weird variety. Um, they look like spaghetti squash, and I keep getting confused <laughs> and going, Oh, I hope I'm not harvesting my spaghetti squash. Uh, but they're supposed to be eaten young, like a zucchini. Oxalis, sweet potatoes, tomatoes that are just fining. Same thing over there. These are things I just never got into the ground. So they're just doing their own thing. This got tore up by the wind in the storms this last week. Um, onions that are curing, and this part's still okay. So they're actually drying and not getting rained on. I think this one is holy basil. Um, and so I had this in with the beans to try to like get it to come back and it is coming back. So I'm gonna actually get some holy basil. When we harvested the mustard, we threw some of the chaff around. And as a result of doing that, we now have mustard volunteers <laughs> in all of these spots. So there's mustard volunteers and a very angry tomato. This whole thing got whipped really bad by the wind. As you can tell, because I can be outside of it. It's not good. Um, all of this is just, I'm going to have to tear all this down uh, and think of something else. Hi, chickens. Um, but I will do that after this harvest is complete. This was an okay idea earlier in the year, and then as this just keeps tearing apart, it's, yeah, it's not working. <laughs> but that's okay. If we've eaten a bunch of food out of here, and we're going to eat more food out of here, and there's beans, but all of these brassicas all got too hot, so they're not happy, but it's, it's okay. Things are alive, and you can see caterpillar damage there. But, yeah, it's just... This is just a very silly thing that's happening right now, and it's, yeah, it's just a very silly thing that's happening right now, and I need to find a better solution, but that is future Lawrence problem. In the main vegetable garden, we have black currants that I've ignored um, and need to harvest them all. There's just not enough to do anything really with them. Um, that's something I'm trying to establish. And they're not super tasty on their own. Uh, tomatoes coming. Those are my noodle beans that never do well here in Sweden. They just don't. <laughs> um, and these are a variety of carrot that is supposed to be short and stubby and good for containers. And I popped them in here in between salads. So they're all just little salad carrots. Um, they're very tasty. The flavor is good, but they're just kind of silly. This is chaos and 
clearly a caterpillar has been doing something to that guy. Uh, there's volunteer uh, New, New Zealand spinach. I think, yeah. Uh, but so that volunteered from last year, and it's a very happy plant, and we should actually eat some of it because we haven't been. And then there's water spinach back there, which I have planted on purpose. And clearly need to water this bed because it didn't get enough. It didn't get any water from the rain. Um, same thing. This monster is rust sprout that is just very happy in those conditions, but very loose leafed, which is fine. It's still food. Um, and then some cabbages and beets. Uh, these are this, all the same Brussels sprouts started at the same time. Like, you can see how different that is from this guy. Um, and so just growing conditions, nutrients in the soil just changes how well they perform. We've got cucumbers and cauliflower and I think one last onion in that bed. This is more sweet potatoes. And then I've got some beets hidden in there to try to keep the birds off. This actually I think might be, it might be time to harvest these guys. I'll probably need to get to that this week. Um, onion, and then I put more onions in. And just if we get some, we do what we feel. We don't. Um, more carrots. I just keep interplanting carrots because the kids like carrots, and they like to come and pick their own carrots. So that is why there are so many carrots in random places. Uh, onions and strawberries, and then this is the pumpkin nonsense. Um, I didn't actually plant out this entire thing. I only planted out the front half of the bed and then I ran out of starts and so I started more <laughs> and then by the time those starts were ready to go in, this was always like, like oh my god, I'm going to take over the world. I'm like, all right, you do you. So all the pumpkins in the house came from here and then there's more, lots more, uh, just hidden throughout and yeah. The problem that I have is I thought I put a butternut squash in here, or not a butternut squash, a spaghetti squash in here, and I thought I put one of the young, like, greens that keep confusing me, which are the green ones that are in the house, with the summer squash, um, and, like, can't tell for sure if one of them is doing well and one of them is not, or if there's only one because I don't remember. Um, so yeah, but there's another little pumpkin getting started. But I do need to come in here and wear some like squash appropriate clothes and get a bunch of these pumpkins out and curing in the house because I'm ahead of schedule on pumpkins this year, which is weird. Um, this is salad that is bolting that needs to go to the chicken soon. More carrots, more carrots. Um, cabbages that are, some of them are getting decimated by pests, some of them are doing okay, most of them are not, but it's fine, we have more than enough food, because we have more than enough food, and I overplant so that we have enough, um, there are beans going back there, and fennel, and more Brussels sprouts, and kale, too hard to walk through this but uh, yeah there's just there's lots of food happening and then this is trailing over and my theory is that like the pumpkins in the middle are gonna exhaust themselves and then the pumpkins out here will start so we should be getting kind of like successional harvest as it goes out and takes over the world um, but I did find one of those little green ones just now so can show you. This guy is the guy that looks like a spaghetti squash, but I think is the one that I'm supposed to harvest like a summer squash. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, the chickens are mad at me now because they're like, feed me and give me water. You've been outside for longer than three minutes. Right. Hey guys. Yeah. And that's a kale plant that I pulled out for them last night. Uh, it was planted last fall. So they stripped it down and they've just been eating it. So 
So they have snacks. So they're not hungry. They're just greedy. <laughs> okay. Um, this is second planting of corn that is coming up with a tomato just in it because I put a tomato sucker in here. There's butternut squash here and here. Um, so, and a cucumber. Yeah, there's just like an errant cucumber. What I thought was the corn could be for them to trellis themselves. This is chives, perennial, very happy, um, more corn. And then this is my first planting of corn that is getting ready. It's getting close. They're not getting very fat. And I had two stalks fall down. The first stalk, um, I only had one ear on it and it was not pollinated. So I gave it to the chickens along with the entire um, stalk of corn and they, it's a grass. And so they just ate the whole thing down. So best reason to have chickens, in my opinion, to eat your yard waste and make you compost. So yeah, but hopefully this will result in some corn. And now we're getting three like silks per, like th this is happy that it, I think at least it's happy enough, but yeah, we got a bunch of rain. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping we'll actually get corn. And if not, I'll buy corn from the farm across the street because that is where that corn seed came from is I bought corn from them last year, saved one of their ears, and then just put the kernels in the ground and called it a day. Um, for my birthday, I bought myself more rosemary and thyme in a container so that I can protect it in the greenhouse over winter. Uh, rosemary here without protection is not perennialized. It's an annual. So uh, I didn't realize that until my rosemary all died. Uh, what's going on in here? So this is carrots and spinach. And this cloth is too good at keeping water out. So the, it's try, I'm trying to keep the birds off of stuff, but it makes it harder to actually utilize all the rain we've been getting. And it's compressing down. So I, I don't know that that's actually a helpful thing, but that's why we experiment. That's just an apple from our neighbor's tree. Brown elder infiltrating. My summer cabbages totally decimated and angry. This was also under cover and was not doing well. So I took the cover off because there was no use. Um, yeah, you know how we do. A couple of, I think, butternut squash. Yeah, but it, it just doesn't get enough sun here. So it's fine. But I Gonna leave this off to remind myself to water that. Look at that hose. It's a mess. The greenhouse is a jungle. Jerusalem artichokes, grapes, cucumbers that are not happy, even though they're supposed to be. Um, artichoke, not happy. None of my artichokes are happy. I started them forever ago. Uh, it's probably my own growing conditions. There's a volunteer shard in the corner that's being eaten by things. That's okay, because there's just a volunteer shard in the corner. <laughs> Um, kales that aren't happy, other things that aren't happy, uh, these beans that are growing up and out of the greenhouse, uh, tomatoes that are dying. I planted these in January, so, like, it's fine that they're spent. I'm just letting them finish the last of their fruits. Uh, little pepper plants, little, uh, ground cherry plants. I need to come in here and water this. Peppers, peppers, cucumbers. I don't think you can tell, but back there, there's an armenium yard long that is setting a singular fruit that I've seen so far. Um, we've got melons coming on. This one did not get pollinated. And so that is dead. Boop. Uh, Solaria. Okra. Finally getting an okra. This is my second year trying to grow this. Last year I got flowers but no fruits. 
but they're just super small. And in this container that probably doesn't have enough nutrition, so I think I need to fertilize stuff. But yeah, no, well, that requires time and remembering it. Uh, this is coriander that has gone to seed, and so I'm just letting it uh, dry out, and we'll harvest the seed. Now we can use it as a spice. Kale that is angry. Kale being decimated by cabbage whites. I never sprayed BT. This is my own fault. I know that. Um, but I'm going to pull this and let it ripen in the house. This is my San Marzano tomatoes, which this is the first time I've ever grown them. And one of these three plants that I'm growing in a potato container, which is nonsense to me, like... This is where the plant is growing, is in one of three pockets of this container. And I'm getting fruits this big from the plant at the top of the container. The plant at the bottom of the container... Okay, so this is one from the middle. And then this is one from the bottom. Top, middle, bottom. That's kind of hilarious. Um, but... This size right here is probably what I was expecting. <laughs> and these are just monsters. But yeah, these will go ripen in the house and I will make sauce with them because that's what they're supposed to be for. Um, and then the, I did have a lot of blossom and rot on the bottom one because it gets watered unevenly and it doesn't have as much nutrition because when I do fertilize, it fertilizes the top, which makes sense why the top one's bigger. Um, and so it gets less in the bottom plant. But I also now have, like, the second round that's enormous. I don't know. Yeah, it's just... It's doing much better than I expected for something I've never grown before. Oh, and this is my red Russian kale that was in the greenhouse. Um, and it was just setting seed so I'm letting the seed dry out and I'll save some of it I've already been pulling some and just throwing them in the garden and seeing if they'll volunteer and come up uh, we have eggplant and more peppers and more eggplant blossoms so we should get continual harvest um it's my thousand head kale that just never did very well it's fine and then carrots in the bottom carrots did good kids have been eating the carrots Hi, yay. These are Colette's. So these are supposed to set little friends in the nodes, but there's a caterpillar. Just trying to eat. And everybody else just trying to eat. I'm gonna make him go away, because I'm pretty sure he killed a different plant before he tried to kill that plant. Uh, Sweet 100 cherry tomatoes, which are the first ones to ripen, because they always are. They're beautiful. There's three plants in the top of this potato, <laughs> potato bucket, and that's that's the result. Uh, I did not prune them. They're just growing in the greenhouse. Uh, I've taken a couple suckers off and put them around, like, but in terms of like doing single stem heavy pruning for like increased production, that didn't make sense to me given my growing conditions. So I just let them go wild. Also, I prefer a wild garden because that's just my deal. <sighs> purple sprouting broccoli that I planted too early so now they're gonna go make flowers in here and I'm just gonna let them because they're pretty and it'll feed the bees and encourage them to come in here and pollinate my other things and that is my first ripe cayenne pepper ever so I need to figure out what I want to do with that and harvest it it's probably gonna go into pickles or get dehydrated and ground up into a powder because it's a cayenne um, yeah Cauliflower losing its mind. Uh, I feel like this is just weird, right? Like, this is like potatoes, right? And I just keep succession planting potatoes. And this is what those containers are supposed to be for, but I'm using them as vertical gardening substitute because I can't get vertical planters here in Sweden. I just have not been able to find them. Um, this cover works way better, and I'm going to have to do this with the other bed because it's finer. It keeps the insects out. It keeps the birds out, which is what, well, it doesn't keep all the insects out. It keeps most insects out. It keeps the birds out. And that is my main problem right now is the birds eating my seedlings. 
especially my beet seedlings. So I replanted this bed and fixed this bed with beets so that we will get some beets because I've done four plantings of beets and the birds just take them down no matter what size the leaves are. They love to steal my beets. So I'm trying, I'm trying to get more beets because we should have had more beets, but we don't because the birds are jerks. So this is attempt number like seven to get beets in our lives. Uh, the tomatoes on the fence line are flowering. There's more sweet potatoes here. I'm not doing very well. The artichokes that are not doing well. But yeah, we got little ripe cherry tomatoes. This bucket, not doing very well. These beans, not doing very well. Birds are attacking it. Uh, cabbages, I overplanted these expecting some damage and loss. And we got damage and loss. And also a volunteer potato which makes sense because it was reused potato soil so that might just become a potato bucket it's fine this is the fig tree that refuses to die which makes me very happy because it's my daughter's one year birthday present that she picked for, out for herself um i took her to a flower show or a garden expo and was like pick a plant and she chose that one um we got cucumbers coming. Yeah. This is just like a salad stack. I put carrots and salads and then cucumbers at the base. And the cucumbers we've been actually eating and I made some pickles with red onion. <laughs> um, and then these carrots are good. The kids are picking them and eating them. So I'm gonna leave those for the kids. We are still getting raspberries. This variety that is just plants I got from my neighbor across the street crops from like June until the frost kills it basically so June through October we get like slow successions of raspberries like you can see more flowers are coming on it's I have no idea what the variety is because I got them from my neighbor's yard from the previous owners before they moved and I took out two roses and then put them in and that was it and then like now i'm planting the suckers because there was um, cloth down to keep the roses from spreading which lets the weeds grow on top so like i'll weed through here and then put roses and now we've got these strawberries and these are all volunteers too and they're just running everywhere beans and kale and more tomatoes and spaghetti squash that one i know for sure is spaghetti squash uh, my one zinnia. Uh, there's some summer squash in here. More tomatoes. I plopped some basil in where marigolds were spent. Um, my oregano is losing its mind again, so I need to trim that back. This is corn that was planted at the same time as the corn back there. This is how you know growing conditions matter. Um, but yeah, it, and I also was growing potatoes with these, so I had to uproot the corn in order to harvest the potatoes this this is just proof of mistake and i'm fine with showing you that because proof of mistake all of this is an experiment and some things work that you wouldn't expect and some things truly do not um beans and celery and rutabaga i think pretty sure it's rutabaga um, and then an errant tomato sucker that i just stuck in this box and it's now giving us fruit um, yep, more tomatoes, more zinnias, beans. Uh, these are supposed to be broccolis. They're, I've just been having a bad year with my brassicas. Um, blueberries that I forgot to plant last year, but are setting fruit because they're all in a clump and they fertilize each other. Um, more collets that aren't doing very well. Different zinnia. Uh, all the volunteer calendula, which I need to like pull these seed heads before they drop because that's how we got all of this volunteer calendula. All of it. So yeah, I need to come in here and do some maintenance. Um, this is the summer squash plant that the yellow squash in the house came from. Uh, there's kales in there. There's uh, purple sprouting broccoli for next year. More tomatoes. And yeah, that's the garden. <laughs> in Sweden on August 1st. I'm gonna put these in the house and feed the chickens and maybe 
get some raspberries that are going to go bad before the kids come home tomorrow. Um, and have them for breakfast. Because maybe these are beautiful and delicious. Thanks for watching.